We have a CMC Pro Tip video. Today we're going to talk about how to install the patient tie-in system along with the pelvic harness. So we're going to start out with one of the side straps here. We're going to lay it out. So we start out by Putting the strap at the head end, you can see we're going into a pocket so it can't slide here. We trace through the buckle, and then we trace back through it so it's secure. You notice that we're tying down on the secondary rail, not on the top rail. That way, uh, it is uh, number one, it won't snag on anything on the top as you're uh, going over an edge. Also, for a smaller patient, it's more secure because it will pull the patient down into the basket. If we're at the top rail, it may be right over the top of the victim and may not actually secure them. Our second one, second point, is right here at roughly at the waist height at the patient of the patient here. We're going to trace through. Now this particular basket is a one-piece basket, and we are using a one or a, the uh, the one-piece tie-in system. If you have a break-apart basket, there is a, a two-piece tie-in system. So basically each half, it would be split here. There, one would end here and would start here. Now when we get down to the end, we want to make sure there's no twists in here. So in that way, when we tighten it up, it's nice and uh, secure on the patient. Also, it's more comfortable if there's no twist, and it makes it easier for you as the rescuer to tighten it up. You might be able to notice on here, there, we do have the stokes marked so that if we take this harness off, it's easy to go ahead and put it back on. Uh, so if we take the webbing off for cleaning, it makes it just much, much easier to, to reinstall. Okay, so we're set there. We're gonna go ahead and take our second strap now. So many teams have used one inch tubular webbing and done the uh, same type of patient tie-in here with the lacing and also with, with improvised harnesses within. And it does work well. Uh, however, you'll find that a, a pre-sewn patient tie-in system such as this, and especially if it's pre-rigged as we're doing, it, it makes it much faster and more efficient uh, for the rescuer to package the patient. Again, our second strap goes near the waist. And just like before, we make sure this is straight. And then we go ahead and attach the foot in. As I mentioned, we can technically put this on either way. We definitely prefer the adjustable end at the feet whenever possible. So now we'll go ahead and install the intermediate points here. We put these roughly at the patient's knee and at the elbow. If we need to move them because of a patient's injury, we can slide them back and forth in this bar a little bit, or if we need to reposition one or two of these, it's pretty simple, as you can see, just to undo these buckles. then and do this side. And you'll notice that this is color-coded so it's very uh, simple to see if you've put it on correctly. Also on these intermediate tie-in points here where there's a buckle, you can see there's a nice pad so the buckle don't, won't, uh, won't dig into the patient and it's uh, nice and soft. makes it much more comfortable for the patient. Okay. 
The next component is the tie-in for the, for the pelvic harness. So we're going to start out just above where we had our patient tie-in here. And just like before, we backtrace this through. is going to come up. The last piece is simply girth stitch on in the same location but on the other side. Come through, girth hitch, come around. What will happen is then our patient pelvic harness will go here. We simply trace this through, come up, make sure it's flat so it's easy to tighten. This will come back up, connect through here, and then it's adjustable here. So that can, now the last thing we want to do is we want to check and make sure that each of these buckles has been put in properly and that we've backed it up. We're good. So now our next uh, thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll show how to actually package a patient in the basket utilizing the tie-in system and the, and the pelvic harness. So now we're going to continue on with actually placing the patient in the litter and utilizing the pelvic tie-in harness and the tie-in system here. So you'll see that we've put the pelvic harness pre-placed it in the basket. So once the patient's in there, it's much easier to put the leg straps on. We're not trying to fish that around. One of our CMC employees has volunteered to be our victim. So Kevin, if you uh, don't mind getting in the Stokes basket here. It's important you follow your local protocols. Uh, medical protocols here as far as patient immobilization and patient movement. So uh, also we're just demonstrating the tie-in system here in the pelvic harness so we would be putting eye protection and a helmet and so on on the patient if this was a real situation. Also you notice that we have the basket on very firm uh, footing here so the, the, the basket, the uh, litter is stable while we're uh, packaging him. So now we're going to go ahead and just find our yellow strap here. We're going to snap in our leg loops on both sides. Work out any twists that are in there. And we're going to snug these up. Okay, and once that's snug, we're going to go ahead and place our yellow strap here through and come back and tie into the second half of the yellow harness here. Everything is color coded to make it quite easy. So we want to make sure that we get the twists out so it's more comfortable. Okay. So this is going to keep the patient from sliding down. It's especially important if the patient has a leg injury, we don't want them sliding down and having their feet contact the bottom of the basket. It would uh, uh, potentially put the, uh, the patient in a very uncomfortable position. So now we're going to go ahead and connect in our cross straps here. Now you need to make a choice here. If we have a nice compliant patient like we have here with Kevin, we can go ahead and leave his arms out. If he was combative or if he was unconscious, we may want to put his arms in. So now we're going to go ahead and just make sure that the padding is, is towards him and we're going to start working the slack down. And when we get down here then, we're going to take the slack out. And again, I'm just going to work this down and snug that up. The excess webbing simply goes between his feet. I'm going to connect up the other side now. Again, going in this case under his arms. We could go over if need be, Whoop. over the shoulder, but under the arm. Work out the I always want to work the twists out there to make it more comfortable. So we're coming down 
here, there. Okay, the excess goes here. Then you notice we're very careful in how this was placed when we put it on the basket and also when we placed uh, Kevin in here so that it didn't get, the straps don't go any, anywhere near his, his throat or his carotid arteries so as not to cause any injury to our patient. So now we've uh, completed uh, packaging the patient in here. We would attach our Stokes bridle and we'd be ready to uh, lower or raise the victim. Comfortable? Yes. Excellent.